Last time we talked about open versus closed chords. Today I want to talk about how to get from one chord to another in your music with a technique called voice leading. Let's say you found a chord progression you think sounds interesting, like this one. You might already see that this chord progression looks and sounds a little strange. Why is that? Well, all of these chords are still in root position. Even though they're the chords we want to use, they're not put together in any musical kind of way. They're still in their raw form. It's like the difference between having all the raw ingredients for a cake and having a finished cake. So how do we get these chords to sound like they belong together? The first thing we're going to do is add a bass line to each of these chords. This will give a nice variety to the music since all we have right now are the notes that are on the higher end of the piano. So if we look at this first chord, the root note is C. So we'll add a C in the bass staff here. Since we already know that these chords are in root position, we know that the root note is the lowest note of each of these chords. We'll take those notes and add them to the bass staff to make our bass line. And now we have this bass line. And if we add in the chords above, it sounds like this. There are many different ways to add a bass line to a series of chords. This is just the simplest way and will give us a nice starting point. So now that we have a bass line, it sounds a little better, but the chords above still sound like they don't belong together. They're not connecting in a way that sounds nice to our ears. Now we get to the new stuff. This is also where a bit of trial and error can happen, so don't be afraid to try different things to get the music to sound the way you want. What we're gonna do now is called voice leading. This is gonna help the music sound like it's connected and not just random chords being played. The specific voice leading technique I want to show you is called common tone voice leading. What we want to do is keep one note from chord to chord the same and in the same voice. This is going to help tie the chord changes together. Since this process involves moving the notes around the staff, we'll start with the first chord as is. And leave the rest of the chords blank. We'll also leave the bass line alone for now, but we may have to change it as we go. So the notes in the first chord are C, E, G, and the notes in the next chord are E, G sharp, B, D. The only common tone we have is E, but we've already used it in the bass. So in order to follow the common tone voice leading rule, we're going to keep the E in the treble clef the same. The other notes we need to fill out this chord are G sharp, B, and D. The G from the previous chord can go up a half step to G sharp and the middle C from the previous chord can go down to B. This leaves the D. We currently have an E in the bass, but in order to fill out all the notes of this chord, we're going to move it to D. This is why I said earlier that there can be a bit of trial and error in this process. Don't be afraid to try different things. There is more than one way to voice lead a chord progression or melody. So, so far we have these two chords. On to the next chord. The next chord has the notes F, A, and C in it. Now, if we try to follow the rule for common tone voice leading here, we can't. Because these two chords have no notes in common. So what do we do? We have two options. We can have the chord and bass line move in contrary motion or parallel motion. Parallel motion is when the upper notes and the bass line move in the same direction, like this. All of the notes move up the staff to the closest note in the new chord. Parallel motion can either move up or down. Here's parallel motion moving down. All of the notes move down the staff to the closest note in the new chord. And contrary motion is when the upper notes and the bass line move in different directions, like this. Let's look closer at these three options and see which one we like best. 
The first option looks okay, but we do have this fifth between the F in the bass and the middle C. That could cause us problems in the next chord because having parallel fifths in the same two voices going from chord to chord to chord is considered not ideal. It's considered not ideal because parallel fifths make the music sound hollow and empty because it makes it sound like one voice instead of two separate voices. The interval of a fifth is so strong that it sounds like you've lost a part of the music when you have these parallel fifths over and over and over. The same thing goes for parallel octaves. You can have parallel fifths and octaves in your music if you want to, but if you're following classical Western music rules, then they're considered a no-no. So the next option also looks okay, but there's this awkward transition in the upper voices, especially this G sharp to F. Having to resolve down an augmented second seems harder than resolving up a half step to A. So this is still an option, but let's look at the last one. In the last one, the chord shape stays the same in the upper voices, which makes it easier for a keyboard player if this is being written for keyboard. And the G sharp resolves up a half step to the A, which makes it easier if this is being written for voice. However, we do now have this octave here that we'll have to look out for and make sure we don't carry through to the next chord. But I think we'll go with this contrary motion. So, so far we have... In the next chord, we're going from F A C to G B D F. So F is the common tone. We'll keep that note in the same voice and carry it over. Now here's where you have some options. Let's take the top voice. If we move the A to the next closest notes in the chord, it could move down to G or up to B. Having the G so close to the F in the voices might cause too much dissonance. Uh, it would sound something like this. So instead, we'll move it up to the B. The C can move up to D. This leaves us with G in the bass, which works out fine because that's the last note we need to fill out this chord. So now we have So, the last chord. Even though we do have a common tone in the G between the last two chords, I want this G in the bass to resolve down to the C. Because I want the bass to end on the tonic, and I want to end the phrase with an authentic cadence. You can always leave the G where it is, that's absolutely fine. Like I said before, there's more than one way to voice lead a chord progression. So, we've taken care of the bass. What about the upper voices? Again, we have two options. We can move the notes down, or we can move the notes up to the next notes in the chord. But if we look at the trajectory that the highest voice has been making for the past two bars, we see that it's been slowly making its way up the staff. From G to G sharp to A to B. It would be weird to go back down to G here. So instead, let's resolve up to the C. That gives us room to move the D and F up to E and G as well. Congratulations, we finished the phrase. Here's what it sounds like. Now, if we change some of the rhythms of the chords, make some longer, make some shorter, and add in some passing notes, we get this. Thanks for watching! I have a download of the sheet music we use today for my patrons on Patreon. If you'd like to get access to these downloads, please check out the Patreon link below.